Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Ali and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create short stories in less than 30 minutes. And before we dive deeper into this, I'm going to show you an example that we're going to create together. So let's go ahead and watch it and then come back to start creating. Look what I found. Oh yeah. You're thinking what I'm thinking, right? No, not really. This is completely wrong. Ha ha ha, come on buddy, I'm not the bad guy here. I hope you love the example. Now let's dive into it and start creating. And I want you to know that this video took me more than 30 minutes to create, considering writing the script and storyboarding my idea and creating a voiceover using text to speech, but that's totally okay to spend time in a preparation because the preparation part is essential to make your videos much engaging and fun to work with. The cool thing about creating videos is that you don't have to spend so much time, but only do this while preparing for your project. And then when you get to creating, this should be the most fun part. And so let's have fun and start creating and show you how you can easily create short videos on the go in less than 30 minutes. By the way, I'm giving away the source files of the resources that I used, not the source file of the project, but the resources I used in this project, like the Texas Peach files, the music file and the sound effects. So you can easily follow along with me and create that video in less than 30 minutes. And without further ado, let's dive into it and have fun creating. So first things first, we're going to start with our background. So to do this, we're going to go to our backgrounds, open up the drop down menu and choose 3D. And then from there, we will use the search bar to type in market and then look for the image that we want to use. Scroll down until we find market two. We grab that and drop it onto the canvas, scale it up to make it a full width. And this video is going to go for 20 seconds. So we will expand the background in the timeline and make it go all the way until 20 seconds. Next, we're going to start grabbing our character. So we're going to go back into our main menu of our studio, open up the characters uh, button and then open up the drop down menu, choose 3D and then we can type in Mike. For the those characters, you don't have to use the same exact characters depending on your license version. Uh, if you have access to other characters, it's really up to you how, which characters do you want to use in the project. These are not the primary characters, so I'm not really concerned about them. But if you have access to Mike, you could just grab him in the timeline and then position him right here like that. And then he would be um, making talking and listening. So I'm going to choose the action by clicking on the wave button on the characters track to open up the action list. And I'm going to change the action to to uh, talking and listening. Then I'm going to extend extend this all the way until the end like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and uh, clear the search term and then I'm going to use grandpa. So we can grab this guy over here. And so because we need to make a little bit of difference in their actions while they're talking and listening to each other, I'm going to start his first action by idle. So I'm going to click on the wave icon on the character's track to change his first action to idle. And then I'm going to go to the right panel under settings where it says add new under actions. I'm going to click that to add another action. And that would be talking and listening. This way we keep a little bit of difference between both characters while they're talking and listening to each other. And it doesn't look like they're making or matching the same exact uh, movements um, on the track until the end of the scene. Once you have your character, you can just place him a little bit, you know, maybe in front of the watermelon right there. And then we can just make him a little bit uh, smaller uh, like this. And then make sure that this character is kind of like uh, facing him right there. And then the next step is to grab our 3D creators. So what we're going to do is we will go back to our 3D creators and then we will start by grabbing Tom onto the canvas. Once we have him there, we will choose our, from our preset or you can feel free to design your character however you like. So I'm going to go with one of my presets and then I'm uh, going to choose the ones that I saved. And that would be uh, this one right here. I'm going to start with this one. Then I will make a duplicate 
for uh, this character um, and then set up the uh, actions and keyframes. So once we have them there, we need to change this first action from idle to walking. So we're gonna click on the idle uh, button on the character's track to open up the action list. And then we will change that from idle to walking. And then the, the first thing I wanna do is simply click on the uh, walking action button again on the character's track to open up this little panel because I wanna disable the start and the ending animation. So reason for doing that is because our character is gonna start walking from the left side outside of our scene, make an entrance into the scene. And that's why I wanted to disable the starting and the ending animation. Next, you can see that the character is facing the left side. That's fine. You can easily rotate or spin your character in the right angle by clicking on the rotate icon above the character. And then you can simply just rotate your character in the right angle, just like that. Once you're happy, you can click on rotate again to exit the rotation mode, and then you can scale them down a little bit, and then you can zoom out of your canvas by scrolling with your mouse to the bottom and simply drag your character to the left side outside the scene like this. If you wanna see a little bit better outside the canvas, that's easy. You can just deselect everything and go to the right panel under settings, or wherever it's gonna be for you. If you're working on a laptop, it should be on the left side for you. So under settings, you wanna change the canvas mode from hide to show to be able to see what is outside the canvas in full color. And once you have that set, here's what you wanna do. You're gonna select your character, and then we wanna extend the walking actions to eight seconds. So we're gonna hover over the little square towards the end of the track, and then drag the character to extend the action all the way until eight seconds. One thing that I wanna point out is that I like to set up my character's actions as my first step before uh, creating keyframes. It's just much easier to do it that way and you will have more control over your keyframes when you have all your actions set up for all characters. So his first action is going to be walking. They're going to add another action. So we'll go to settings and then add new. And then his second action is going to be idle. So we're going to click on that and then we'll keep him idle uh, for a little bit. So we can extend that just a tad bit and then we can add another action and click on add new. And then the second, uh, the third action is going to be searching find out where it is searching right here. I'll keep it that way. Then I'm gonna add another action and then he would be idle again. So I'm gonna extend that until the end of the track, make sure that this is lined up like this and we're good to go. Next is to start keyframing this character. Like I said, we're gonna, I'm gonna do the keyframing uh, the only difference is that I'm going to remove the searching action for my duplicated character. But let's just go on with this one and show you how you can easily do this. So here's what we want to do. We're going to start by having our playhead at the very beginning of the timeline. Simply click on add animation above the timeline. Use position. Easing is going to be linear for both in and out. And now you have your two keyframes ready on the character's track. All you got to do to master the character's walking action is simply advance your playhead forward in time, and you wanna spot on the uh, part where the character is going to stop moving or stop walking and then start to turn to a different angle. So you wanna bear it in mind and spot where he makes his final step before he turns. And at that point, we're gonna drag our second keyframe all the way to where our playhead is at. Make sure it is still selected, and then we can simply just drag our character, and he's going to be right here, kind of like in front of uh, Mike, but a little bit to the left side, like this. So let's go back and then start watching. We can go back now and then click on canvas mode, which change that to hide. So we can go back right here, um, press one to go back to the very beginning of our timeline, press play and see what that looks like. There you go, Tom is making an entrance and he's walking really smooth. It's so beautiful, right? And then he's gonna turn back. So here's what happens. Once he turns back, right? You're gonna find that we, what we wanna do is we want to have our playhead on the middle of the second keyframe of our position animation, select the character, click on add animation, and then we will use easing as linear, go to the properties tab, and then choose character view. Character view is the one that's responsible for spinning your characters in different angles. Next, you have your keyframes ready. You can select your second keyframe and simply click on the rotate icon above the character, drag or spin the uh, character to the right angle. So he should be looking to the right side, just like this and then he should be fine right there. And then he's gonna start searching and then go to idle again. 
So now we have set up our first character. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a duplicate of that character. So I'm going to hit the control or you can do command D if you're on an OS to make a duplicate. Now we have uh, two duplicates. The first one is going to be Sam and the other one will stay Tom. So I'm going to right click the first character and then rename and call this Sam. When the reason I'm doing that, because I want to have two different names so that when I start using text to speech, I can easily sync up the audio with different characters. So that's one thing you need to bear in mind while working with your text to speech is that if you have the same character with the same name over and over and over again, when you, and you try to sync up your audio with a, a specific character, you're going to have a hard time picking up the right Tom or the right Linka or whatever. Uh, because they're all they all have the same name so you got to make sure that you give your characters different names so you can easily find out what they are and sync up the audio to the right character now once we're ready we could just go back with our playhead to the very beginning and then here's where we're going to make a little bit different so the second one is tom i'm going to hold the shift key with the left arrow key to drag this one a little bit to the left side like this and then I can choose a different design for him. Again, you can feel free to design your character however you want to make him look different. For me, I'm gonna choose one of the presets that I already have. And I may wanna go with uh, this one right here. And then I will change the action. So like I said, I'm gonna change the searching action for him and keep it idle, right? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the searching icon on the character's track and then go to the settings and then i have a trash icon to delete this action like this and then i can keep them idle i'm also going to delete the other idle so we only have one idle and I'm then i'll extend his idle action that we have initially on the character's track all the way until the end and make sure that he is lined up next we're going to go back to the second keyframe so here's the thing because the um the character view animation keyframes are uh, overlapping the previous keyframes you can easily hover between both keyframes of the character view drag them a little to the right side so you can select the second keyframe of your position animation and with your keyboard you can hold the shift key and drag this one a little bit to the left side so there's a little bit of difference while they're standing right next to each other and then when you're done make sure you grab your second key your uh, second keyframes of the character view animation to where they are so they can both just look like that and then we are good to go the only difference we're going to make is that we're going to drag sam and make him above tom so they are in the right order then we can go back and then have a watch and take a look at that and we should have both characters set up in the right order just like that they're walking together making an entrance until they stop walking and then they will just be right there now you can see that there was a little bit of a spinning at that point and then they go back again that's not a problem what we can do is we can drag the second keyframe of the character view animation a little bit to the left side so we're going to shrink the animation a little bit and do the same for the second one like this and then we can have a look at that and find out okay now we have just a tad bit of the spinning that shouldn't be a problem it's okay it's just um, something wrong with how these characters you know work when they're spinning uh, but you have to keep fine-tuning your keyframes in order to make it as perfectly as you could it's not going to be 100 percent perfect though but you can try your best and now once you have this set up it's time for us to start using the text-to-speech so like i said every, all the files are available for you you can simply just uh, click on the link in the description download all the files before you even start working with me on this and then uh, have them ready import them into your project and then you're good to go so here's what we're going to do once they stop walking at this point we're going to go to our media files and then we will start with sam part one we will drag it right here on the in the track in the timeline right there and then i'm going to right click and then choose sync with sam right this is how you can easily sync your audio with your characters and then you're going to move your uh, playhead forward in time you're going to leave just a few frames after the first um, audio track and then you would simply just tr uh, drag the second one for Tom. So we would go with Tom part one and drag it right here. And then we will do the same thing. Right click the audio, lip sync or sync with Tom right there. Next, we will also move our playhead forward in time. Keep a few frames forward and then drag Sam part two right there here. And then we can right click and then choose sync with Sam same thing we're going to advance our playhead keep a few frames different so reason i'm keeping few frames difference is to have a little bit of gap or silence between uh the sentences right just so that it sounds more natural and of course 
If you feel it sounds unnatural or unrealistic, you can always make adjustments to where they are. And if you want to put them all together, it's up to you how you want to do it. But that's how it is. So Sam part two is the last one. The next one we're going to do is Tom part two. So we're going to grab that and drop it right here. I'm going to right click this one and, and sync with Tom. Then we can also advance our playhead forward in time a little bit and then drag Sam part three right there. Make sure there's a difference again, like I said, right there. So you might want to zoom in on your timeline, right click and then sync with Sam. Now we have all our uh, text to speech set up. So when I go back to this part and then start listening to this, this is how it sounds. Look what I found. Oh yeah. You're thinking what I'm thinking, right? No, not really. This is completely wrong. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I'm not the bad guy here. Right. And so this is sounding perfect so far. We're good to go. And then our next step is to uh, create the illusion that Tom is going to pick up an object from the ground. So we're going to go back with our playhead from the very beginning of the timeline. And then we're going to open up our studio, go back to the main menu and in the search bar, or maybe we can uh, in the search bar, we can type in uh, money right here. And then we can scroll down until we find the image that we're looking for. And that would be uh, the image that's called target. We can drag and drop it onto the canvas. And now all we need is to have just the coin image without the target surrounding it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the shift key along with the letter C to grab a circle. And then I'm going to uh, scale down the circle and make sure that it fits on the coin image right there. And then once I'm happy with it, then I'm going to select both layers. So the circle along with the image, right click, and then I'm going to choose mask image with circle. Now I only have the image of my coin. The next thing I want to do is drag or extend the coin image all the way until the end. Make sure this is perfectly lined up and then it's time to pos position it where we want. So first things first, we need to adjust its rotation. So we will still have it selected. We'll go under settings and click on properties. And then we're going to change the 3D rotation on the X axis from zero angle to negative 54. So that's a little bit tilted like that. And then we can scale it down like this. And then we can simply just drag it and put it right here. And then we are good to go. So let's just have a look at that so far. Look what I found. Oh, yeah. You're thinking what I'm thinking, right? No, not really. This is completely wrong. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I'm not the bad guy here. Cool. All right. So at this point, once they finish the conversation, this is where we're going to have them or have Tom uh, pick up the objects. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back right here um, and then, uh, you know, add Tom. That was uh, that should have been a step that I had to make earlier, but that's OK. I'm going to grab Tom right there. Make sure he's in the same outfit. So we're going to choose that really quickly. And so that's something you need to bear in mind um, is that you have to take a snapshot of your character so we can create uh, or take the arm part of his body and create that illusion to make him look like he's picking up an object. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, take a snapshot by right clicking the character's track and take a snapshot right there. And then I'm going to delete the character. Then I'm good to go. And now I can go back to where I want to have the hand. And that's basically after they finish the conversation, I will simply drag the snapshot image that I created right there. And then I'm going to create a, a custom mask using the pen tool. So all I'm going to do is I'll click on the plus sign um, on the top left right there to activate the pen tool. And then I'm going to create my custom path. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mouse to click and then start creating my mask around his left arm, right like this and there, and then add, you know, uh, path lines around. Oops, let's just delete the one that we just created. Undo that. All right, there you go. So we can just connect shape. And then once we're done, we can go to settings. Make sure you take the uh, border width, so make it zero pixels. And then when you're done, you want to select uh, both images, the path and the snapshot. Right click and mask these guys. And now you have an image of just the arm. So all we're going to do is we're going to scale up the image like this and we're going to rotate it a little bit to the left side and make sure that we position it right here. Maybe we can make it a little bit smaller in size, something like this. And then we could just position it so that it looks like it's about to pick up the, the coin right here. That looks perfect. And now it is time for us to um, adjust the keyframe. So I'm going to uh, shrink down the image a little bit right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating keyframes. So all I'm going to do is I'll have my image selected and then I'm going to click on add animation. I'll use position. Easing is going to be as is. And then I'm going to select my first keyframe. 
let's just zoom in on the timeline a little bit, create our first keyframe. And then I'm going to drag the hand a little bit upward to the left side like this. And then it, once I advance my playhead forward in time, it should just go all the way to where the coin is. At this point, like I said, you can either have it pick up the coin really quickly or leave a little bit of a gap. It's up to you, but I don't recommend keeping so much time so that it looks natural. So we can just keep a couple of frames after and then simply uh, select your image along with the coin image. Both of them highlight both in the timeline, right click, and then you want to group both together. Next, you want to uh, click on add animation above the timeline and we're going to use position. So the reason we're grouping both together. So once we keyframe the image, we will grab both at the same time now that they're grouped up. Next, we're going to select the second keyframe and then we can just make those guys go away like this maybe we can go to make them go out of the scene just like this like that and then if we just play it that part take a look there you go and it's just going to go away so we got our scene set up now it's time to start working with our camera animation and that's the cool thing about the camera animation is that you can create uh, depth into your scenes to make your videos look more impressive and add that cinematic feel to have your videos look more dynamic and because if you notice, we're only using a single background throughout the uh, whole video from start to finish. So we want to make our video more dynamic using the camera animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the very beginning of my timeline, zoom out of my timeline like this, and then I'm going to go back to the effects and components tab, click on the components tab, and then drag and drop the camera uh, component to the uh, canvas. And then now we have our editor opened up. So here's what we're going to do. So once they start showing up in the scene, like once they make an entrance um, on the left side like this, this is where we're going to make a zoom in on both characters. So at this spot, so this is basically four seconds. Now I'm going to double click on the camera track on the, uh, above the timeline right there uh, to add a camera animation. I'm going to shrink, it, shrink this down. So I'm going to drag the camera animation bar a little bit to the left side like this. Then I'm going to make sure my playhead is after the um, camera animation bar and simply just drag the camera frame and adjust it, its size to make a zoom in on both characters like this. We need to have a close up of both characters while they're making entrance. And then at that point, here's what we want to do next. We're going to have our playhead at the very end of the first camera animation bar. And then we want to double click to add another camera animation to make sure this is butted with the first one. So we can simply just drag it and make sure it is lined up and, a, and is pretty close and actually butted with the previous one. Then we're going to uh, extend this one. So I want to make sure that the camera is extended until they finish walking. So we're going to place our playhead on the second keyframe of their position animation. That's basically where they stop moving. Then we're going to drag our camera animation and extend it, extend it all the way to where our playhead is at. The one thing that we want to keep in mind is we want to right click the camera animation bar and we want to change the easing effect from smooth to linear to keep it uh, smooth and make sure that our camera is going to track the characters while they're walking from one position to another. Next, we want to make sure that we select the camera animation bar, like keep it selected, move your playhead after, then drag the camera animation to where they are like this. Then I want to show you what it looks like before we continue creating. So let's just go back, take a look. There you go. Now we have our guys, we're going to make a zoom in like this. And then the, as you can see, seamlessly, the camera is, what I found. is tracking their movements until they stop moving. And then once they, uh, once Sam says, look what I found, um, we want to have another camera animation. So we're going to click on, uh, double click to add another camera animation right here. We're going to uh, shrink it down to speed it up also, and then simply drag our playhead after it. Then we can simply just make a close up. So we're going to drag the camera frame and have it focus on the coin. So we can have a close up on the coin right here. Let's just go back and listen to this part or watch this part. Oh, yeah. You're thinking what I'm thinking, right? So when he's about to say you're thinking what I'm thinking, we can add another camera animation right here. And we can also shrink, shrink it to speed it up a little and then make sure that we drag the playhead after the camera animation bar, drag it back to both characters to show uh sam while he's searching like he's kind of like thinking what he wants to do with this coin uh like this and then let's just keep playing no not really this is completely wrong <laughs> come on buddy i'm not the bad guy here right so at this point you can see here that you, you know the hand is starting to show up at this part right so here's what we're going to do before the hand show up 
right? Here's what we want to do. We're going to have our playhead exactly right before the hand show up. And then we're going to uh, double click to add another camera animation. We're going to uh, shrink it down like this. We're going to move our playhead or advance it forward in time and then go back to a uh, close up shot on the coin like that so that when the hand goes in and it makes an entrance like that like that you can see here it's about to pick up the um, coin and it's just going to pick it up like this and then it would just go back right there so once it's done right once it picks up a hand you can just add another camera animation that's uh fine so we what we can do is we can simply double click uh to add another camera animation and this one i want to have it uh, you know go to a full width and this is one thing that i want you to know about is that Here's what happens. Sometimes I see people make a zoom in and they forget to make the camera go back to full width uh, so that when they transition to their next scene, they still see a close up of something and they are missing the full width of their camera. So here's what we want to do. Well, like I said, after adding the last camera animation, while well, you know, when the hand picks up the coin, we're going to zoom in onto the timeline to the very maximum we can get to. And then we're going to shrink down the camera animation bar to make it a single frame like this towards the end of the scene. Maybe we could just have it right after the uh, hand picked up you know, picked up the uh, coin and then make sure your playhead is after. Then you can go to your right panel, click on expand camera, and that will make it go to a full width again. So we can rev review this whole scene together now and, and take a look and see what that looks like. And there you go. Look what I found. Oh yeah. You're thinking what I'm thinking, right? No, not really. This is completely wrong. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I'm not the bad guy here. And then you can see it goes back to full width again, which is really beautiful. And one thing that we want to do is we want to add, um, you know, a little bit of uh, VFX, right, on top of the coin. So let's just find a spot where we want to add that in the video. So we could just go back and say, with, at, this part, at this point, it would be when he says, look what I found. Look what I found. Oh, yeah. And then where, when the camera goes on to a close up on the coin, that's where we're going to go back into our studio, go back to the main menu. And we're going to scroll down until we uh, find where it says um, effects right here. And then we will to open up the drop down menu and then we will choose liquid lines. The one that I use in this project was the uh, liquid lines number 17. So we will drag that right here and drop it where we want it. We can advance our playhead to see what it looks like. And then what you want to do is you want to click on the fit to screen icon. Uh, you can see a replace, a replace icon. And then this one is the scale um, button or icon. The next one is a fit to screen. Once you click that, it'll uh, shrink down the uh, image. And then you can simply just resize it and make it really small so that it goes just right above the coin right there like this. And then we can go back and watch this part right here. Oh yeah. You're thinking right and you can see this is pretty cool we can even have it happen a little bit earlier so go back again watch oh, it oh yeah you're thinking pretty cool all right looks pretty good to me i can just you know adjust it and position it right there where it's kind of like you know almost towards the top of the coin right here and it just looks fine now we completely finished uh creating our project it's time for us to add uh the music and the sound effects so for the music um, I'm going to go to my music. Again, the music should be available for you as part of the uh, downloads. So for me, because it's not available in the media file, I'm going to go to my uh, all and then I will just type in redemptions. So the one that we are going to use is called redemptions walk. We're going to drag this one and drop it underneath all the tracks in there. And you can see this track is a little longer than the video, which is fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to with our playhead to the very end of the video and then we will uh, have it selected click on the cut button to cut the layer because we don't need that and we want to make adjustments to the background music so that it's not loud and overlapping the audio so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to uh, adjust the the volume level from 100 to 35 percent and then as far as the fade out we're going to add a little bit of fade out so i'm going to make it fade out uh, for about 3.5 seconds now if we go back to the very beginning and listen to this uh, whole thing um, and actually let's add the sound effects of the market so i'm going to go to my files and then i'm going to drag this one also and drop it at the very bottom of the timeline right there 
and I'll do the same thing. I also want to cut this layer because it's a little, uh, a little longer. Uh, so I'm going to cut it as well like that and then remove the part that I don't want. And for this one, we will change its volume level from 100 to 30%. We will also add some fade out. So that would be 3.9 seconds like that. And now we can just go back and watch this whole thing and take a look at how beautiful this scene looks like. <laughs> Look what I found? Oh yeah. You're thinking what I'm thinking, right? No, not really. This is completely wrong. <laughs> Come on, buddy. We're not the bad guy here. Cool. So this is how you can easily create uh, short videos on the go in less than 30 minutes. Again, bear in mind or consider the preparation that is essential as part of your creation, as far as writing your script, storyboarding your idea, and doing voiceover, whether you're gonna use your voice or text-to-speech or even hire a talented person. This will take a little bit extra time to uh, make all those preparation, but creating should be the most fun part. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this journey, creating a whole scene from start to finish. I thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment on this uh, video. Let me know what you're thinking, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Man!